time to do a little launching in my most favorite spot for launching rockets other than McQueen Park for mid power and low power I'm at the blowing dust area today on a, a beautiful early November day and it just couldn't be any better it's 65 degrees one mile an hour wind is in the forecast here and we are going to do a little launching so I fired off my sounding rocket just wanted to uh, watch it not necessarily film it it landed right there so that one mile an hour wind I think is gonna work straight up and straight down right now I put my goblin up on a D227W this is another warrior and another place I love to launch because my first launch here I lost that goblin I did a little video on finding it so we're gonna put this one up and see how she flies off to the north more than any of the others today but probably a function of the rod position oh boy it's coming down fast so the shoot might have a little problem might have come apart a little bit <laughs> I can see it it's acting like a streamer but that thing's gonna that thing's gonna hit hard. Boom. Well, it looks like my goblin landed next to my old one that I lost here three years ago. I'm sure it wanted to check on it because somebody moved it. What the heck? It was under this tree and it's moved probably by an animal. I would think that the grave has been desecrated. So, somebody said, well, how do you know it's yours? Well, there's definitely mine. I put Kevlar like that, and I use my, uh, put tape in there to stop zippering and look at like, looks like it zippered. <laughs> anyway, uh, there's the D motor that I had in there. Um, definitely was mine, but I am going to put it back. in its grave site and then uh you know check on it every once in a while bring it some flowers and tell it you know this is this is one of his kin we might be able to share some uh stories of flight out here in the blowing dust area <laughs> just kidding this is where it really landed quite a ways from the car which you can see my setup there Probably the furthest I'd walk today. So I'm not sure what happened. It looks like it survived. Wow. I mean, you can see where it hit a fan hit right there on this corner. And I've epoxied them all on before because they've all popped off. <laughs> Oop, there's a little crack in the body right there. I have a baffle in this too, so it might have been breaking on the baffle line. But the parachute just, it's still intact. It's just didn't unfurl all the way. This is a weird one. I had to push the motor mount way out to fit the baffle, to leave room for the chute. And 
the nose cone and all the good stuff. So interesting. All right. I'm going to play with these new QJet B14 3T motors. They just came out a few months ago. It's supposed to be quite the, quite the boost. I'm going to put it in an Apogee Wayfair as a 3 16th inch lug on it and I'll switch out the launch rod and we'll see how these perform. the B motor chuff chuffing like all those aerotech motors do the little ones anyway but flew good got it up there good and here it's thunking on the desert floor that's always good <laughs> It means it's down and you can see it and you get it back. All right. All laid out right in the bathroom that's out here, apparently, when people are coming out here. This seems to be the spot. That's not wadding for rockets anyway. This is a Star Orbiter I built a while ago. I've never launched it. I'm putting it up on an F-15-4. It's baffled. Got an 18-inch launch lab shoot on it. Quarter-inch rod. It's a Pro Series 2 rocket, so I think it'll go pretty good. Five, four, three, two, one. Those SSF motors are awesome. Just nice and slow. And maiden voyage shoots out. Oh, there we go. Lots of smoke now. It's hard to find. I have an altimeter on there as well. Star Orbiter missed the hill. My Super Alpha was up there. This one's down here. Thank you very much. That was a precarious climb up that thing. <laughs> I know people use this hill for um, target practice, shooting into this pile of gravel here. Not today though. And let's see your maiden voyage we got. 1,304 feet. Wow, that was pretty. It's pretty meaty for this. Awesome. I would baffle every rocket I have if I could. I, some, I just sometimes don't remember. The only damage is a little bit of black on the shock cord. There's zero markings on the parachute. No markings on the altimeter. No black anywhere because of that baffle. So, just a... Marvelous invention 
and I get mine from Apogee. They make great ones. This is an Ascender going up on an F56T. I've only launched this once before with these things scream. Plastic fins means there's probably no uh, real issues with fin alignment when you build these. <laughs> it's an old Pro Series 2 model from Estes. Quick to build and easy to fly. Five, four, three, two, one. That worked. And the shoot's out. I could tell when this was coming down, it was funky. Looked like the shock cord wound itself around the back. But still, I mean, there's, it's hard to damage these. You can see where it kissed the side there, the red paint. Oh, the shock cord is really long. There's no way it could fly next to it coming down, but coming out when it's ejecting. Give a little smooch on the way out.